What's the deal with Blue Origin and their long-promised but still totally unseen mega rocket, the New Glenn? In theory, Blue Origin should be right up there with SpaceX leading the next generation of space exploration. They were both founded at more or less the same time, with more or less the same goal, by two men who would go on to become more or less equally rich and successful. Blue Origin and Bezos love to talk a big game, they just never have much to show for it. But this all changes in 2024 with the debut of their first orbital rocket. Or does it? This is the Space Race. The New Glenn is a project that has been under development at Blue Origin since around 2012. The design of the rocket was finally revealed at a presentation by Jeff Bezos in 2016, which showed off a gigantic new rocket design with a fully reusable booster core. At the time, there was nothing like New Glenn. Bezos actually managed to get his announcement in about two weeks before Elon Musk debuted the interplanetary transport system concept that would eventually go on to become Starship. Fundamentally though, New Glenn is an entirely different vehicle than ITS or Starship. New Glenn offers the same futuristic appearance, but its functionality is more grounded in traditional rocketry, basically doing the same job as a Falcon 9, just with more size and more power. At the heart of this booster are seven of the new BE-4 engines that make a combined 3.85 million pounds of thrust burning liquid methane and liquid oxygen fuel. Blue Origin says that's good for up to 45 metric tons of capacity to low Earth orbit. Compared to the methane-burning SpaceX Raptor 2 that powers the Starship, the BE-4 offers a little bit more thrust, 250 metric tons versus 230, but it's also a significantly bigger engine than the Raptor. Blue Origin likes to call the BE-4 a medium-performance version of a high-performance architecture. And what they mean by that is the engine is overbuilt for the purpose that it's being used for. They're never going to push the system to its limit the way that SpaceX does with their Raptor. The BE-4 operates at a much lower chamber pressure, and that should result in a more consistent and reliable engine. Considering that 8 out of 33 Raptors failed on the first launch of the Starship, Blue Origin might have the right idea here. It's not the power that makes New Glenn special though, it's the size. While a Falcon Heavy might still offer over 1 million pounds more thrust, the New Glenn has a 40% wider cargo fairing at 7 meters in diameter, plus around double the length of a standard Falcon nose cone. SpaceX has talked about making an extended length fairing for the Falcon Heavy, but we have yet to see it done. So, New Glenn is much closer to Starship in terms of size and cargo volume, although with nowhere near the power. Blue Origin's claim of 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit is a bit questionable considering the size of the rocket and the thrust that it has available, plus the need to reserve fuel for the landing burn. It would be a lot more plausible to say 45 tons in an expendable mode where the booster is sacrificed and the BE-4 engines are run closer to their actual limit. Either way, it's looking like the niche that New Glenn is going after here is customers who want to put very large objects into relatively low altitude orbits. But aside from deploying the core modules of Blue Origin's own Orbital Reef space station, it's unclear how much of a market there really is for this kind of a service. It's actually a bit hard to imagine just what Blue Origin was thinking when they designed New Glenn. Like, why is it so big? What's the purpose for making the rocket so wide, other than just looking really cool? We know why Starship is so gigantic, and there are several good reasons for it, because it has to move a large crew of people from Earth to Mars, and people need space to live because it has to be able to carry 100 metric tons of stuff all the way to the surface of Mars because it has to be able to land on Mars then lift off and then re-enter Earth's atmosphere and then land again. That all demands a big-ass rocket. And for the original ITS design, Elon had wanted a 12-meter diameter ship, so he had to compromise at 9 meters diameter for the final Starship. Plus, SpaceX already has their own use case for the low Earth orbit capability of Starship. They need it to deploy the final constellation of 10,000 Starlink V2 satellites. And obviously, NASA considers that capability useful enough to choose Starship as their new crewed landing vehicle for the moon. So, as ridiculous as Starship may be, there are legitimate reasons for it to exist. Even in the promotional animation for New Glenn, Blue Origin just shows it deploying one 
single generic looking satellite thing, which at scale would be the biggest satellite ever launched. And it's hard to believe that something like this is really necessary in a world where technology is constantly shrinking in size. Though even with all of that said, in April 2023, it was announced the New Glenn is going to Mars, or at least it's going to be used to send two much smaller spaceships on their way to Mars. These two crafts are called the Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers, or Escapade, and they're based on Rocket Lab's photon kickstage that is typically used on top of the Electron rocket, which is tiny. So each vehicle is only about 550 kilograms in weight, and with dimensions of 70 centimeters wide by 90 centimeters long. So it's like if you and a friend called an Uber and an empty school bus showed up to drive you. Even the people in charge of Escapade have literally said that the new Glenn is quote, massively oversized for this particular mission. But they didn't have much choice in the assignment. New Glenn and Escapade were paired up under a NASA program called the Venture Class Acquisition of Dedicated and Rideshare, or Vader, and the idea is that NASA helps to connect low-stakes missions with new and unproven launch vehicles. Basically, Escapade isn't a critical Mars mission, it's not carrying a new rover or a multi-billion dollar instrument, so it doesn't really matter if the mission gets delayed or even if it fails to reach Mars at all, not the end of the world, and therefore it's a perfect opportunity to test out New Glenn and just see what it does. The most interesting thing here is that Escapade is scheduled to launch in the second half of 2024, probably around September to October. And because this is a mission to Mars, they only have a limited window of time when the two planets are at their closest distance. If they miss that window, then the mission has to wait at least two years before they have another opportunity. The timeline here is fascinating because as far as we know, the new Glenn only exists in computer renderings. We've seen the BE-4 engine and we've seen a full-scale model of the first stage booster, but we have yet to see a functional new Glenn prototype perform any kind of live testing. And maybe we're just spoiled by SpaceX and the way that they've been developing the Starship out in the open for everyone to see, that's definitely not usual for a new rocket, but you would think that seven years into development and about one year out from this mission to Mars, that New Glenn would have at least given us a sign of life. Considering that SpaceX has totally revised the design of Starship like four times between the ITS presentation in 2016 and the BFR in 2018, they were still able to begin flight testing the little Starhopper prototype in 2020, and by the spring of 2021, they had managed to fly an upper stage prototype to an altitude of 10 kilometers and even land it successfully on the ground. And then it was another two years after that to get a full scale rocket in the air for an orbital test flight. The best indication that we have on the progress of New Glenn comes from this escapade mission announcement. We heard from Ariane Cornell, the Vice President of Commercial Orbital Astronaut and International Sales at Blue Origin. She told the media, quote, it will be an early New Glenn mission, and we are going to be ready. But you should never take a salesperson's word for anything, so we can also turn to the principal investigator for Escapade, Rob Lillis, of the University of California Berkeley Space Science Laboratory. He said about New Glenn, quote, It hasn't launched yet, and we are concerned about that, but having seen the Blue Origin facility at Cape Canaveral, I was much less concerned after seeing all the work they've done. I'm confident they will likely be ready for the launch of Escapade. So this guy has had an opportunity to see something that the rest of us haven't, and he seems to have been impressed with what he saw. Though, I want to go back to that quote and repeat this one line. I'm confident they will likely be ready for the launch of Escapade. He chose to insert that word likely into his comment, so I don't think the man is fully convinced. Aside from what progress may or may not have been made in the vehicle itself, we are also watching the development of the BE-4 engine very carefully. And this seems to be the one area where Blue Origin has excelled. The company was very fortunate to sell United Launch Alliance on using the BE-4 to power the core stage of their new Vulcan Centaur rocket, which is a design that is significantly more mature than New Glenn. So, in theory, the ULA Vulcan should be flight testing the BE-4 well in advance 
of New Glenn, and that is incredibly useful information for Blue Origin to have. Unfortunately for them, the Vulcan, which was supposed to launch for the first time this summer, has been unexpectedly delayed by a flaw in the design of the Centaur upper stage. It actually exploded on a test stand a few months ago, but we didn't know the cause. That's now been revealed as a structural weakness in the ultra-thin steel skin of the outer shell. So the rocket actually has to be redesigned with a reinforced structure, and then a new test candidate has to be constructed. Again, this is the upper stage, so the problem has nothing to do with Blue Origin. The BE-4 engines have so far performed perfectly, and the booster had a successful static fire test that confirmed it is ready for launch. But now, they have to wait for the upper stage to be rebuilt and retested before we can even consider another launch attempt. So at this point, we might not see a flight test for the BE-4 in 2023. That means Blue Origin just has to continue on with New Glenn and hope for the best. So back when Blue Origin was just starting out, they had this mission statement, Gradatum Ferociter, which means step-by-step step ferociously. It's kind of like a tortoise and the hare thing. They even started painting turtles onto the side of their new Shepard rocket after every flight. It's a pretty respectable strategy, and it comes as a pretty stark contrast to the move fast and break stuff methodology over at SpaceX. The Blue Origin roadmap was to first perfect the art of suborbital rocketry with the new Shepard, then leverage that accomplishment into the orbital new Glenn, and then leverage that into an even more capable new Armstrong moon rocket. But looking at their track record, Record, it's starting to feel like Blue Origin has lost its way. They never really developed New Shepard to the maturity and launch cadence that it was intended for. They flew a handful of crewed launches, then had one catastrophic failure, and haven't really touched the rocket since. Now they're still trying to push New Glenn into service without any proper testing or any real reason for their rocket to even exist. They want to build a space station, they want to land on the moon. They went from taking it step by step to trying to leapfrog the entire competition and jump to the head of the pack without even reaching orbit. I can't stress that enough. Blue Origin has yet to put even one of their products into outer space, but they want to lead the space race. Now, to be perfectly clear, I haven't put anything into space either, and I never will, so I'm not meaning to criticize, more like just pointing out the obvious here. But it is a really interesting story to talk about, and we are genuinely fascinated to see what happens with the new Glenn over the year to come. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.